A curse on wine that mocks our thirst, a curse on love's last consummations, a curse on hope. Faith too be cursed, and cursed above all else, be patience! It's like a Christmas carol, except instead of Christmas celebrations, it's satanic orgies with witches. Better than food, man. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Better Than Food Book Reviews. I'm your host, Clifford Lee Sargent. Great to see you, as always. How are y'all doing? Get that coffee. A warning, there will be spoilers in this one. You might want to have a refill handy, too. This is going to be a long one. Today is Goethe's Faust, the Walter Kaufman translation. Uh, parts one and two, but uh, only a little bit of part two. We'll talk about that. Johann Wolfgang von Goethe was one of the most famous Germans, probably the most famous German author in history. He inspired many writers and philosophers, the big names, among them Nietzsche, Hegel, Schopenhauer, Kierkegaard, Jung. Napoleon was a big fan of his book, The Sorrows of Young Werther, a book that reportedly caused an epidemic of suicide because the main character Werther kills himself. Uh, it's a thinly veiled uh, uh, depiction of Goethe's own experience in love, as a School of Life video lets us know, which I've linked to in the description box below. It's a very, very nicely put together, eloquent, uh, video summary of Goethe's life and work, uh, including the, the, the plot of Faust. I'm going to meander and blah 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 on it a little bit more, but if you want a, a quick summary before you get into this, uh, that would be the place to go, in my opinion. So, he wasn't only an author and an artist, he, was, he did all sorts of stuff. I mean, I'll probably review more of his work in the future, so maybe we'll save it for then. Uh, but he was an accomplished figure. Goethe was a big, big deal. Remains a big deal. Faust is a difficult book. The first part of the book is considered to be, by some, the greatest book in German literature. Goethe wrote Faust for his entire life, from early outlines in his teens until his 80s, I believe. I think he passed away at 82, and he was, he was writing it into his 80s. That's insane. So that's approximately 60-something years of writing a book. The Inner Struggle of Faust, which is this quest for knowledge, and understanding is the essence of the book. In a narrative similar to the story of Job, God and Mephisto make a wager involving Heinrich Faust, a man in the earthly realm struggling with his failure to get anywhere in his pursuit of knowledge as a scholar. He hasn't got anything to show for it. His life sucks. He's middle-aged, he's single, he's not wealthy, and he seems miserable. So God's a gambler. The idea that he's supposed to be all-knowing is amusing in this respect. He's definitely got that going for him. Depressed and disenchanted with his quest for knowledge, Faust actually almost commits suicide in the beginning by drinking poison. Right as he's about to do it, though, uh, he hears the, the Easter choir singing about the Christian message of resurrection and eternal life, and, and so he doesn't, he doesn't do it. A bit later, Mephisto visits him in the form of a black dog. Yes, like the one I believe represents depression. It represented the devil in 16th century England. It's quite intentional in Goethe's part. But what's funny in this case is that it's not a particularly threatening breed. It's a poodle, and it follows Faust home. Suspicious of said poodle, Faust casts a spell and subsequently invokes Mephistopheles. This was the last step that Mephisto needed, an invitation. That's interesting. So here's Mephisto, suddenly this guy is super charming and uh, claiming that he's in allegiance with Satan. Mephisto isn't Satan himself, that was, uh, that's sort of confusing. Or at least he doesn't seem to be. I, I think he's just sort of a uh, lower on the hierarchy of demons and mischief makers or something. I'm not quite certain who Mephisto is. He's kind of a, a servant of Lucifer or whatever. The interesting thing is that Faust actually has to be complicit with Mephisto. He has to invite him in. There's all these laws, right? And if I'm not mistaken, it's actually Faust who suggests the deal with Mephisto, as Mephisto can't leave unless Faust says so, unless he gives him permission. Faust realizes that Mephisto can't leave, he's trapped, so he tries to take advantage of the situation. Because he's in a quest for knowledge, right? He's, he's trying to get it any way he can, and nothing else is working. This isn't to say that Mephisto isn't evil, or that he doesn't have bad intentions, he does, just that Faust is complicit in his own downfall which is important. Mephisto is actually just manipulating Faust in order to get his soul, but Faust thinks he's the one in power. It's interesting because I always pictured Mephisto as this seducer, you know? But the fact of the matter is that Faust has a central role in his own damnation. So Faust pledges that if he reaches the heights of ecstasy or joy, he will say, abide, thou art so fair. 
And he wants to die at that moment. Faust wants to die when he says that and will serve the devil for eternity onward. And Mephisto says, you sir, have got yourself a deal. He wants to die when he's exhausted with pleasure, when he's satisfied. He's pushing 60 and he just wasted his life searching for knowledge. He's exhausted and depressed and bitter and jaded. He's mad as hell and he's not gonna take it anymore. I'm gonna read you Faust's curse. As in that terrifying reeling, I heard the sweet familiar chimes that duped the traces of my childhood feeling with echoes of more joyous times. I now curse all that would enamor the human soul with lures and lies, enticing it with flattering glamour to live on in this cave of sighs. Cursed above all our high esteem, the spirit's smug self-confidence. Cursed be illusion, fraud, and dream that flatter our guileless sense. Cursed be the pleasing make-believe of fame and long posthumous life. Cursed be possessions that deceive as slave and plow and child and wife. Cursed too be mammon when with treasures he spurs us on to daring feats or lures us into slothful pleasures with sumptuous cushions and smooth sheets. A curse on wine that mocks our thirst, a curse on love's last consummations, a curse on hope, faith too be cursed, and cursed above all else, be patience. Cursed be patience indeed. Fucking love that line. The hair on my arm rises, I understand, I get it. I feel the intensity of Faust's anger, of his frustration, with life itself and its disappointments. I understand it even though it was published in 1808. That passage that I read is worth the cost of admission, as in the time it will take to finish and understand Faust. It's worth it, just for that, for that line. It's great because it's like, why not sell your soul to the devil? Nothing else has worked. This part of the book is my favorite, I can definitely relate. And I think Faust's rant with his frustration is one of the best parts of the book. It might be the best part of the book for me. You see, Faust is like, fuck it. No other means have gotten me anything. I haven't learned a damn thing about this thing called life. So you're the devil, supposedly. Show me something. Sure, take my soul, fuck it. It's doing me a lot of good. So that's what he does. This is from the Cliff Notes when he invokes Mephisto. This act confirms Mephisto's suspicion of Faust's disgust with positive methods of finding satisfaction and illustrates Faust's movement toward the nihilistic cynicism which characterizes the devil. This play is something I've been thinking about lately. Optimism and pessimism. If there's a natural propensity towards pessimism, I have it. Outside forces aren't necessary to succeed or fail. I do believe it could be a question of mindset. And I know how beaten this poor horse is, but it seems to be true. You can either see solutions everywhere or problems everywhere. Both are present, both are perfectly logical. What filters do you have to set up though? Through which lens do you prefer to see the world? See mine for so long has been through a dark lens because anything less seemed to be disrespectful of the struggle that we, and others, everyone, encounter. Total optimism seems like naive tunnel vision, willingly blinding oneself as a survival mechanism. And that's interesting because I didn't put this together before, this is actually on the spot and Im improvised because uh, Faust is blinded in the end and believes he's doing something good when Mephisto is actually leading him into his own grave. It's interesting. So. It's curious. But because of that, Faust is saved. So what does that say? Does that say you have to blind yourself and try to do good even though everything is, is collapsing around you and, you and you'll be in God's good graces and be saved? You can hear the, the, the cynicism in my voice. <laughs> but that's just it. You can perfectly imagine the circumstances that would necessitate such a view, right? Willingly blinding yourself with optimistic tunnel vision. I think any of us who have been around for a few decades could. Ignorance is bliss. Cypher's juicy steak is delicious. I'm undecided. I don't know. Maybe Goethe was too, because this is what I'm getting from Faust. In essence, it's the inner war of a man, racking his brain with the confusing nature of life, between love and cynicism, faith and nihilism, men and women's dueling natures. Remember how I'm always talking about incompatible parts of the personality? men and women at war with themselves. If you look at previous reviews, it's really a consistent theme. That's what I'm drawn towards because that's what I experience in the world. So Mephisto shows them the worldly sensual pleasures. They go to a bar with a whole bunch of guys getting drunk and Mephisto's actions become increasingly evil every place they visit. Faust lusts after an innocent woman named Gretchen whom he seduces, impregnates, and then abandons. Later on, she drowns their child, although Faust doesn't realize this until, uh, until later. Also, in order to sleep with her, Faust tells Gretchen to give her mother a sleeping potion, which Faust got the potion from guess who? Big mistake. And she kills her own mother. On top of that, Gretchen's brother finds out, I think he's a soldier, and he tries to fight Faust and is murdered by him, 
with Mephisto's help, of course, and then with his dying words, calls his sister Gretchen a whore. Like, with his dying words. It's like a Christmas carol, except instead of Christmas celebrations, it's satanic orgies with witches. Yeah, one orgy, to be fair. But it's on top of a mountain on the Sabbath or something. It's like, it's epic. It takes Faust quite a long time to come around. Not until this satanic orgy does Faust receive a vision of Gretchen languishing in chains, imprisoned and awaiting death for her crimes. Much later, after several more innocents are killed, it's amazing how slow Faust is for being a man of knowledge, Faust realizes Mephisto's a cunning bastard, and, though he dies, believes he's doing good and righting his wrongs. Even though he's deceived by Mephisto, who thinks he's getting Faust's soul. But the joke's on Mephisto, of course. Because Faust was always striving to be good, or striving to understand, or something, God takes him into heaven, thus giving Mephistopheles the divine shaft. All that investment for nothing. Spending a lifetime with Faust, boy. Doesn't get one single soul out of it. I mean, Faust is a selfish guy. He's not particularly likable. And he's manipulative in his own right. So it's like, you kind of, like, at least me, I sort of, like, felt for Mephisto. It's like you had to spend that much time with that guy. Like, fuck. Back to the hellish drudgery for him. Anyways, yeah. Faust is admitted to heaven by God for his endless striving for knowledge or something. Boring. I think Dr. Faustus by Christopher Marlowe, this earlier version of the Faust story, came centuries before this one, ended with Faust just being damned. Like, that was it. In Goethe's Faust, God's like, yeah, well, A for effort. You can come to heaven. Why not? So he just couldn't send Faust to hell. So it's got this moralistic flavor, which is kind of terrible. Goethe lays it on way too thick for my taste. I wasn't as taken with it by the end as I was in the beginning. Part one is way better than part two. I mean, he wrote this for his entire life, so I think if you ever need an example of like, quit while you're ahead. If you've read or heard about Faust, you probably know the thing about part two. It's confusing, bloated, unnecessary, strange, and all over the place, but not in an interesting way, more like in a why did he bother way. It's okay though. First part's pretty good. So this translation, uh, this translation from Walter Kaufman has a few scenes from part two in it, but a lot of them are omitted. So it makes it more readable. You know, the important stuff is there. You get the, the full story. Yeah, but a lot of part two, I believe, is, uh, is taken out. It's not there. Maybe I'll read it one day, but even this stuff in here feels excessive, so. There's a funny contradiction here, it seems. Goethe seems attracted to the darkness and toys with it. He gives Mephisto pretty clever lines. He's funny, but he's never able to immerse himself totally in that realm. He's just too positive. The book suffers from the exact same problem as Paradise Lost. It's the same thing with Milton. The characters who represent the devil are interesting and seem more human than the holy characters. Or maybe that's just the interpretation of an irreverent sinner. Here's the thing though, there's a lot of fluff. The real substance of the book is inseparable from the fascinating antagonists. But what is interesting is that Goethe's whole thing is that action is the ruling force of the universe. That part is really compelling. Knowledge is not enough, action is key for Goethe. So much of Faust is about desire and action. The idea that it's experience that provides true knowledge. Yukio Mishima believes something very similar. That's why I started weightlifting. Food for thought. Better than food, in fact. So who should read it? Who shouldn't read it? Really, I mean, who shouldn't read Faust? But especially if you love stuff like Paradise Lost by Milton, you know, older medieval texts, Gothic novels, religious stories, you know, I think everybody should give Faust a go. Yeah, all y'all. It's so classic that I think everybody should just know the story and have an opinion about it. Not that you have to like Goethe, even. Goethe is not my favorite, for sure. And, you, you know, it's, it's not as good as I hoped it was going to be. Some things are, some things aren't. It's, it's tough, right? You know, so it's like, yeah, better than food, yeah. I mean, I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna review books now that I, I don't necessarily uh, love because I think there's gonna be a lot of them, especially as I read more, my, my taste, my own taste is going to get more discerning. But I don't want to, uh, but, but I think still we can have discussions and I think we can, we can um, get a lot out of books even if we don't like them. Uh, because it helps to know why we don't like them. I'm not gonna like shit on everything, but you know, I, I think I'm going to change my, my absolutely positive rule for now. Before I think I said I was doing the all positive reviews, you know, because anything else would be a waste of your time, but that's not necessarily true. I changed my mind about that. Uh, I think it could be beneficial to read books that you don't enjoy or that you disagree with or that, um, uh, you know, or, or just that aren't your favorites, but you, you can understand 
where they stand in literary history and recognize their importance. Because, you know, this wasn't exactly a pleasure to read at all. And that may change throughout your life. You may reread a book and it may, it, it may become your favorite when initially the first time you read it, you hated it, you know? Uh, I didn't understand Pedro Paramo the first time I read that. I didn't, I thought that was very, very, very boring. Now I think that book is fucking phenomenal. I think that is one of the best, best books. I think Pedro Paramo is a magnificent book. And I knew that there was something there, or I could feel, I had a feeling, I didn't know. I had a feeling that there was something there because people were like, this book. And it took me, uh, I think, I think two times maybe, but, uh, which isn't too bad, but Anyways, so I'm going to review books that I don't necessarily love in the future. So, there. How you like me now? What else do I say? I, I forget what I say. Um, line. Please subscribe if you haven't. Oh, the coffee lottery. Right. It's time for the coffee lottery. That's what I do. My coffee's almost finished. I, yeah. mm. For those of you who are new, the coffee lottery is where I take all of the names on Patreon who have donated $5 or more per video to the show, and I place their names in this mason jar, and I draw out a name for every review, and I send that person whose name I draw out, a hard copy of the book that I'm reviewing, plus a bag of coffee roasted by yours truly. And the coffee is delicious. And if you would like to get in on that, you can head over to patreon.com forward slash books are better than food and donate $5 or more per video, or you can click on the link in the description box below. And thank you very much. I sincerely appreciate it. It helps keep this whole thing going. Best of luck to all the patrons. Really appreciate it. Thank you. All right, here we go. Who's it gonna be? <laughs> yeah, all right. Well, it's it's because I met him recently and he's a super cool guy. It's just, you know, I want all of you to win if it were possible, but you know, um, uh, but Ed, uh, Ed in Michigan is a super cool dude and will totally enjoy this book, I feel. Uh, so thank you very much, Ed. Really appreciate it. Hope you're doing well, man. You're going to receive Goethe's Faust, plus some delicious coffee roasted by yours truly. Also, if you'd like to support the show and get your friends an interesting gift, you can pick up these coffee mugs by following the link in the description box below. I really appreciate it. And they come in like bigger sizes with like black handles and stuff. There's all sorts of like things you can customize. It's pretty awesome. So the illustration is done by a, a good friend of mine back in Portland, Oregon, and uh, I'll link to his Instagram. He's got some really interesting art, which you can purchase as well. He's a very cool guy. So thank you very much. Hit the thumbs up if you enjoyed this. Please subscribe if you haven't already. DM me on Instagram and let me know which books you think are better than food. And if you'd follow, that'd really help out as well. And please always remember to bring a book wherever you go, everywhere. Bring it. Bring the book. And if you see a poodle, a black poodle, kick it. Kidding. Don't hurt animals. Just joking. Unless they're the devil. But make absolutely sure. No. Don't hurt animals. Just don't hurt animals. Don't do that. Forget I said anything. Thank you very much for watching. Take care of yourselves. Have a good night. Happy holidays. Talk to you soon. Ciao.